Hello guys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. Uh, so uh, this will be a short video. In this video, we're going to talk about a reInvent announcement that was actually not mentioned by Andy Jesse during the keynote, uh, but it was released. Uh, so this is a pretty impactful change on Lambda. Lambda will be cheaper and it will also have more memory. Uh, so in this video, we're, I'm gonna go over both of these changes and do hands-on and also show you a neat trick. Uh, so the change first, the first change is, uh, till now, Lambda was built per 100 millisecond. So let's say your Lambda runs for three milliseconds, uh, but you have to pay for the 100 millisecond because it is built per 100 millisecond uh, chunk. Uh, but with this change, now you will pay only for three millisecond, not the 100 millisecond. Uh, so whatever you have been paying for 100 millisecond, it will be divided by 100, and then each millisecond will be charged that rate. So you will definitely see a cost reduction for your uh, lambdas. So it's a pretty, pretty impactful change. Second change is, um, till now, you can only allocate up to three gigabyte of memory maximum to your Lambda. So three gigabyte as in 3072 megabyte. But now you can allocate up to 10 gigabyte of memory to your Lambda. So let's jump into the console. I wanted to show you a couple of things. So let's go to this uh, Hello World Lambda. Uh, if I scroll down, basic setting, click edit. So here, you can see that instead of 3072 megabyte or three gigabyte, now you can allocate up to 10,240 megabyte on 10 gigabyte, but that's not it. Uh, before, you could only increase this memory with 64 megabyte increments. Now you can increase one megabyte increment. So that is pretty handy. So uh, let's say before, you cannot increase like 1537, 1540, 1541, you could not do that. You can only jump, let's say from 1500 to 1564, uh, you got the idea. So that's another cool thing that came out. Also, uh, before your Lambda function can have maximum two cores, so two CPU cores behind the scenes. So in Lambda, you cannot really allocate CPU the more memory you allocate, uh, the more CPU it gets under the hood. Uh, so before, if your Lambda function had more than 1800 megabyte of memory, it will have two cores. Uh, but now it will have up to six cores. Uh, so that, that's a big change. So uh, if you are running a CPU intensive workload uh, or such as some machine learning model, which has multi-threading going on with this 10 gigabyte maximum memory, plus six core, uh, you can do all that in Lambda. However, one area is kind of unclear. I could not find it in the documentation is, uh, at what memory, how many cores do you have? Like, let's say I have this Lambda, which has 1,541 megabyte of memory. Uh, let me save this. It doesn't show how many cores does this Lambda have under the hood, right? So there is no way to tell. But I'm gonna show you a piece of code using which you could tell how many cores your Lambda has. Uh, so let's go back to um, my available functions. So I'm gonna go to this how many core. And here I'm importing this multiprocessing library. It's default, you don't have to have any external dependency as X and then return X dot CPU underscore count. So if I run this, this should return how many core is allocated for this Lambda. So you can see there are three cores allocated to this Lambda. So let's see how much memory these have. Uh, so this has 5,000 megabyte. So let's say now from 5,000, you go to 7,000 megabyte, okay? Uh, let's save this. Let's rerun this thing, click details. Now you have four cores, right? So using this code, let me show you the code again in case you want to run this. Using this code, you can allocate your memory and see how many cores you are getting. So if you are running CPU intensive workload, uh, you can use this 
to determine how many cores it has. So let's go down, click edit, and let's just put the max, okay? Click save, and then click test. It should come back with six. Okay, here we go. So now uh, you can see this function has six cores. Also, uh, going back to the billing question, see the duration of this function was 1.39 millisecond. Before you would see build duration as 100 millisecond. But now you can see it's only charging for two milliseconds because it's built per millisecond. Uh, so I am saving uh, a lot of money. Percentage-wise, I'm saving a lot because instead of paying for 100, I'm only paying for two. So the last thing I want to mention is this Lambda Power Tuning Tool. So a lot of times you will think that, how do I know how much memory should I allocate to my Lambda function, right? Um, because sometimes you will just arbitrarily put a memory and sometimes you will think if you go up in memory, you will pay more, which is not true. Because remember, as you go up in memory, your execution time will reduce and Lambda is charged based on the allocated memory and the duration. So it's a, it could be a little complicated, right? So this tool uh, takes your uh, Lambda function, runs it in a step functions with different memory settings. So it will run 128, 256, 312, etc. cetera. You can, you can configure all that and you will give input. And at the end, it will produce a graph of execution time versus execution cost. So let's say uh, your Lambda, you are running with 128 megabyte memory. Uh, so the execution time is 35,000 milliseconds, 35 seconds basically. And the cost is around here. So basically 0 0.0007 or something, right? Because for one, one, for one execution. Now, let's say you increase your memory to 1536. So see execution time drop from 35 seconds to around 4,000 millisecond, right? To four seconds, so that's a huge improvement. However, this cost graph kind of still parallel, right? So even though you increased your memory from 128 to 1536, because the execution time dropped so much that the charge kind of remained the same to like 0 0.00005 dollar per execution. So I highly recommend, so you can search Lambda Power Tuning and this page will come up, a GitHub page. And I highly recommend running this for your workload and to determine how much memory you need. And this tool is updated with the latest changes as in the billing change per millisecond change and the memory change uh, up to 10 gigabyte, all that is baked in. Um, so you can just take it, run it and then determine. All right, uh, that's the video as, as promised, pretty short uh, video. Uh, if you found this video useful, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers uh, and then I plan to do a live stream uh, to answer your questions. Like I get a lot of questions on the career move, like what steps should you take? Uh, what kind of courses should you do? What areas should you concentrate on? What kind of challenges should you do? What kind of hands-on? Um, so yeah, so I'm really hoping to hit 10,000 subscribers. That will be a big milestone for me. And then I plan to do a live stream. Uh, all right, with that, I'm going to end this video. You guys and girls, have a great week. Talk to you later. Bye.